I love the direction so far. Like showcasing the, uh, as opposed to rural area and the daily lives of these people. Oh, okay. I thought they were gonna, you know, um, turn around. Oh. Yeah, that look. They're setting up a lot of elements in this opening. Is that kid in on it? What are you waiting for? Go. Like I feel nervous. It's definitely building up the anxiety because I have no idea what is about to happen. The kid? What the fuck? Cut the title card. Now that's a cold open. That was a cold open. Well, we've made such headway with your treatments. Okay. That now it's time we talked about sealing the deal. Hmm. Sealing the deal. My initial diagnosis was that your cancer was inoperable. I feel like that's going to be the theme of this episode. That may no longer be the case. Dr. Bravenick is one of the few surgeons in the country performing lobectomies after full dosage radiation. That painting in the back? Peace and serenity. Love the lung in the, in the foreground. Oh! Giancarlo Esposito. I guess this is the episode that we're going to be finally meeting his character. This is obviously a big decision. Folks are going to want to take some time to discuss it. No. I'll do it. Immediately, huh? There's also the fact that Walter probably knows that most people will probably push him to accept this offer. So might as well accept it now, right? Okay, I'll book the surgery for four weeks from now. That way Walter can be on his feet for the birth of your daughter. Hmm. But four weeks from now. We're setting up goals here in this episode. Combo's dead. Shocked. Off the telephone in the foreground. <laughs> telephone in the foreground in Jesse's. Shot right there just indicates that. Well, never mind. I thought it indicated that Jesse got the word through that telephone, but since Skinny Pete is here. Why'd we have to go pushing in a new turf, yo? I mean, what'd you expect? Expansion. To grow. I'm on probation, man. Fast track to Los Lunas. We're on the verge. I'm making some serious coin, Skinny. He's not gonna take the risk, Wait, though. This game we play in, we don't got the street cred to survive it. Mm. I'm out. Loving the lack of music so far. Just making the whole the whole scenes so far mm. feel grounded. And everyone quit on us. I mean, we, we have absolutely no distribution. Is there any way any of this can be traced back to you? Love his mug. The world's greatest lawyer. You two suck at peddling meth. Period. So, give up on trying to do it all yourself. What you two need is an honest-to-God businessman, right? Somebody who treats your product like the simple, high-margin commodity. I'm guessing that's Giancarlo Esposito's character. And of course, Saul. Yeah, of course, Saul knows. I know a guy who knows a guy. Who knows another guy. <laughs> Of course, of course, it's always, it's always that. Well, what's his name? I have no idea. Secrecy. Very low profile. Mm. Careful like that. 
You know, from what I do hear about him, he sounds a little like you. Ooh. Look, there's some stuff about me you don't know. And... Like you're a drug dealer? This is tough for him to, to explain as well. One of my guys. You can tell that he cares about her a lot. And he doesn't want anything to happen to her. And now he feels like he is a danger to her. We could just get out of here. Whoa. Giving him the offer. Yeah. All right, I really just need you to go. Wow. Some similar situations with Walter. Of course, not to his extremes, but... They are, Jesse is approaching this in a similar manner to Walter, right? Um, pushing away loved ones and all, just to protect them. But at least here with Jesse, he's being more open about it. So Jane will probably understand him more. And she is not leaving. It almost, it's almost telling, like, that is what could have happened with Walter. There's Giancarlo Esposito, but that's what could have happened with Walter if he is opening, you know, opening himself up more to his family. Maybe before he does the whole drug dealing thing. But pride and all. Walter's feeling, feeling nervous. Even I'm feeling nervous. Like, like I've been fidgeting my, my hands this entire time. Gentlemen, is everything to your satisfaction? Oh. Fine, thanks. A week ago, you, you talked like you were all ready to hang it up. Yeah. Things have changed. Things have changed. That's yeah, exactly, exactly what I just said. Crazy how Walter getting better is actually making his life a lot worse. Oh, we're having a little get-together for Ted's birthday, and uh, I've got to pick up the cake. Why you? Yeah, why you? I said I would. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if the show is just trying to make me feel just like Walter, in terms of, like, suspecting Skylar that much, or should we give her the benefit of the doubt? But there's so many hints before about her relationship and what she's and what she's probably thinking of in the office and all. I don't know. I, I actually don't know. Your house is looking a lot more You gotta clean your house, Jesse. The state of your house is a reflection of, of what your mental state is. <sighs> oh my god, this is this is beautiful guys, thank you very much. Happy birthday to you. My oh my. Happy birthday, Mr. President of Benneke Fabricators <laughs> Incorporated. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. What did you wish for? Hmm. Anyway, it doesn't matter now because my contact says it's a no-go. What? What, what? what do you mean? <sighs> no deal. No dice. Shot at and missed. Shit on and hit. Wait, wait, wait a minute. How can he make that decision without even meeting me? I told you, be very cautious. He already did. Right? He already scanned you and decided that you're... 
worthless. Yes, you can call him so. Hey, first of all, I never called him, all right? I called the guy who called the guy who called the guy. Second of all, it's over. With this particular individual, all you get is the one shot. Well, that's not going to stop Walter. No one else handles that kind of bulk. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, he's frustrated. Just like with Tuco, he's not gonna give up. He's gonna come in and he's gonna he's gonna barge in and he's gonna gonna be Heisenberg. Come on, come on, Walter. Why am I cheering for him? <laughs> Los polos hermanos. Love the reflection. He stayed up till midnight. Yeah, he did. Wow. Last customer that leaves. Oh, <laughs> great shot. Ah, oh, the musical cue. That little smile from him. This is the deal. Right beginning of the episode, I talked I about it. Why. I sat here yesterday waiting to meet with someone. I believe that person was you. I was told that the man I would be meeting with is very careful. A cautious man. I believe we're alike in that way. Oh, I'm smiling. This scene is great. Who you think you are? I don't think we're alike at all, Mr. White. He knows his name. Wow. You are not a cautious man at all. Are you familiar with my product? I've been told it's excellent. It is impeccable. It is the purest, most chemically sound product on the market anywhere. But it's not the only this tug of war between the two with their dialogue such a great scene and a lack of music too this helps build the builds the atmosphere more how much product do you have on hand 38 pounds Ready to go at a moment's notice. W will I hear from you? I have your numbers. You can never trust a drug addict. Dude! The way John Carl Esposito just smiled a bit and then immediately gone so much power and intimidation great scene we're talking nearly a million dollars of undocumented revenue mm -hmm. what are you thinking i'm thinking about saving a company i'm thinking about people's jobs about their mortgages and pensions and what do you know <laughs> I don't need to explain, but reminds me reminds you of someone. But this is again showing a likely scenario if Skyler knows about Walter. Sky, don't report this, please. She's not gonna report it, is she? I'm not gonna turn you in, Ted. Yeah, because she cares about him. But I can't be a part of it. Respectable. And thus she wants to leave. I don't want you to go. This episode is doing a great job at showcasing a likely scenario if, again, like I said, if Skyler or... Yeah, if Skyler finds out about Walter. But the problem is, as the story progresses, then Walter's situation is going to get worse and worse. Then how much will how much will um, Skyler actually accept him at that point? It was like this shiny white pearlescent. Like I'm pretty sure I've seen the exact same paint job on a Lexus, right? So we're definitely talking high end. 
At least the funeral is going great. But man, is Jesse getting worse and worse. She got drugs. Don't be like the family that you once saw a couple of episodes ago in Peekaboo. Come on, Jesse, you know better. And Jane, you shouldn't be enabling him. Oh, great scene. Even though it's just Jesse flying up in the air, but phones off, please. <laughs> it's it's not their phone. Oh oh shit. <laughs> what are you gonna do, Walter? Are you gonna he's gonna act it out. Pipes, I guess. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, okay. I thought it was gonna leave a message or anything and that, and that would, like, would ruin things. Yes. Excuse me, where's the manager? I'm the manager, can I help you? <laughs> uh, no, 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 I, I... Met a man here last week, he's a, a black gentleman, he's thin, glasses... There's no yes, such sir, person. The owner. Oh. Okay, never mind. What's his name? Gustavo. Gus. Thank you. 38 pounds, 1.2 million dollars. Truck stop, two miles south of exit 13 on the 25. <laughs> wow. Love how... Love how Walter knows immediately that this is from, from Gus. Like, that's his messenger. Jesse! Jesse, pick up the phone. Pick up the phone! I'm coming by. I need the product. Ah, uh, he's... Uh, Gus's words is gonna stick with Walter once he reaches his house. Don't trust an addict. Bad timing. <laughs> just, just, just waiting for it to hit the corner of the scene. That's a mood. Baby's not coming out already. Oh, oh. oh my god. <sighs> oh god. Oh my god. Just when Walter is about to make the deal, talk about bad timing. Oh no. I'm gonna pick up the phone call! Jesse! Oh. Uh. Jesus Christ. Dude, the frenetic. Ah! Oh, there's chaos! Chaos! Love the direction in, in, in this entire scene. Take them all, take them all. But Skyler, no! He has to make... He has to sacrifice his life again! He has made his choice. Love how the music just stops after that moment. Walter's resolve is unbreakable. Wow, and that's the end of the episode. This episode is titled Mandala, which um, for those who don't know, a mandala is a geometric configuration. I'm just reading at Wikipedia, but um, a mandala is um, basically um, a symbol revolving around a circle, and um, it's it's 
what I'm trying to say is it symbolizes the spiritual journey and of course about trying to see who you are as a person, right? Um, and in the case of this episode, clearly it is focusing more on Walter, but also a lot of other characters as well. Like, it's pretty telling that this episode is where a lot of characters have started started to essentially choose their paths. At least for now. Some of them not concrete. But Walter is very, very concrete in terms of like what he prefers. By the end of this episode, we see Walter... Um, in this difficult situation where he has to choose between his family or meeting with Gus. Now, you can make the argument that meeting with Gus and his whole operation, this whole the whole reason why he's doing it is for his family, but as we've discussed and talked about multiple times already, and I, 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 at, this, at this point, I feel like everybody pretty much knows my stance on this whole situation. It's that, of course, Walter choosing to do this line of work while his motivations is to help his family, but he is also physically and... He is physically away from his family, and it is having an effect mentally on his family, right? Not necessarily for him himself, because he obviously still loves his um, his family. But this exact moment, this exact moment when he chose to meet with Gus and not um, be there in Sky for for Skyler's, um, you know, um, for Skyler and the baby, it's 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 sad. It's. I was actually feeling sad during that moment, and even seeing Walter um, smiling just for a bit when he read that message, right? The baby's coming. Smile of hope, right? Like like happiness. It's finally time, but then he realizes just immediately, a second later, oh no, not now, not now, and that he chose to go with Gus and not meet with Skylar and the rest of his family. We've had a lot of situations and a lot of moments in this show so far where, oh, this is the turning point, this is the turning point, this is the turning point. This is a major turning point. Because it's not just a major turning point for the story, but it is a major turning point for Walter, for Walter's character and, um, and his own... objective and goal it's the point where he started this off as just a means to create money and once it's over once he's gone then that's it done no more doing all of this right and that happened momentarily in season one when after um the whole situation with um, with their first ever meeting, even, right? They laid low for a bit, they, they never really talked about it, but then, of course, he always came back. Jesse, wanna cook? And now we have spiraled into this moment in time where that has become a job. That has become a necessity. At first, it was only just a means to generate money and then that's it. But then, once Walter realizes that he's going to be staying for much longer in this world, um, which I find to be ironic because the one thing that is keeping him alive is the thing that is killing him. Him being alive, the cancer not growing, the cancer choosing not to kill Walter is the cancer killing Walter, in a sense. And now not only Walter has to live further, longer, with his actions, now he has no choice but to continue because you reap what you sow. 
now more people are going after him. Now everybody knows that he is still alive and, and that's gonna make his life a lot worse. And yeah, it's it's a complicated predicament. Walter getting more and more infatuated with this world, right? This drug dealing world. It's We are seeing him become more and more successful, but at what cost, right? It's, it is a sacrifice that he needs to make. Um, but speaking of him getting more and more successful, finally meet him. Well, at least I finally meet him. Um, Gus. Heard about him a lot. Heard about good things about him right before. Never knew what, what he's gonna be, but now we know. It is it is also really interesting because from what I can gather, a lot of people would say that this is their first ever um exposure to Giancarlo Esposito. Now he's like everywhere. <laughs> like you see him in video games, you see him in in like other TV shows like in The Boys, Star Wars and all that stuff like he is everywhere <laughs> at this point. Like he is an A-list actor at this point. But it is crazy to think that for a lot of people this is their first time meeting him. So, I'm kind of experiencing this backwards, but it is fun to see where he started and just immediately, his scene with Walter alone just extruded a lot of charisma and a lot of leadership and of course a lot of intimidation. Him sitting with Walter right face to face, it's just like when it, it does evoke a similar feeling that I had when Walter met Tuco for the first time, when Walter met Saul for the first time, right? These characters that are obviously beyond his league at that moment, right? Characters who have grown their reputation, characters that have, um, that knows how this world works and knows how to operate in, in it. And obviously the ones who are at this moment, at that moment even, um, are the ones who are holding power, right? Saul knows all of the connections. Tuco is the one who is controlling all of the drugs and all that stuff. And Walter is the newcomer right he is the newbie he is the um person that is just getting into this world he doesn't know what to do per se but he has a lot of ambition his ambition is strong and that is like walter's biggest positive point is that he is stubborn he is full of pride he is very egotistical but he is very very ambitious right and it, all of this just mixed and creates probably one of the most dangerous characters in this show. Walter is really dangerous. Like, he is gunning up to, to, to that high spot, right? He, because he is, I mean, I mean, not only he is the main character, but he, he is the one that knows a lot of the chops. Also, plot armor, but point is, he is the protagonist. He is the hero. But he, he is eventually going to topple all of this down. It's almost like a classic story even, right? How the underdog comes in and topples down the empire sort of a sort of deal. But instead of doing it for good, I mean, he is technically doing it for good. But his actions are definitely not good. Intentions are good. Actions, not good. Let's, let's make a complete... Let's make a, a clear separation on that. But yeah, meeting... Um, Gus, right, um, it's, it's like meeting, I would say, the next villain of, of the show. Back when Tuco died, right, when, back when Tuco, um, was no longer in the show, and of course, during that moment, behind the scenes stuff, um, Tuco's character, um, Tuco's actor needs to go away, he doesn't, he can't really continue at that point, right? Um, so they had to, the writers had to kill him off somehow, and which they did. Has the it, it creates this power vacuum of like nobody's really in charge, and then Walter is coming in and trying to fill in that gap. But little does Walter know, that gap is already being has always been filled by somebody, 
We just don't know it yet. That's because of how elusive and how um, secretive Gus is. And that entire scene shows he has the charisma. He has the power. Walter is walking into his home, per se, right? The, Gus's home, his, his headquarters. So, of course, he's going to be the one who is in charge. And just that exchange of dialogue between him, like, I love that. It's, as I mentioned, the reaction is kind of like a tug of war between, like, okay, who can convince the other, right? Because ultimately, Walter is the one who's trying to convince Gus to, um, to accept him, right? That already shows that Walter is, um, the one who is not in control, right? As that it's clearly shown that Walter is the one who is bargaining. And even once the conversation is over, Walter's mood and and um, delivery changes a bit from like very very intimidating. And I I like how during that moment, right before I talk about like what I want to say, but I like how these two characters talk very very slowly, like. This is what I am about to say to you. No, no, no. You don't understand. Like, just just the slow delivery of it just adds more to the gravity and just adds, adds more weight to hit, to their dialogue, both of them. Again, it's like they're trying to one-up each other, right? It's, it's trying to, you know, again, it's, it's, it's a tug of war, right? Walter is trying to reach that same height as Gus, and Gus is trying to suppress Walter down because he doesn't want Walter to be on his level, right? I just love their dynamic already. Um, but yeah, ultimately, once that scene ends and once their dialogue is over, once Gus actually stands up, Walter's um, delivery immediately changes from being serious and trying to be intimidating while also um, inviting in a way because ultimately he does want to, you know, be on friendly terms with, with Gus. His delivery immediately changes to something along the lines of like, so, so, so will you call me? Like that questioning, that doubt, that, that, um, his uncertainty. That is when Gus, re I, th I think that is the point. That is the moment where Gus realizes, because it is, it is the scene where, where I am looking at right now, because, because Gus smiled for a bit and then immediately, um, goes back to neutral again. But I think that is the moment where Gus realizes that Walter can be an asset. But I am going to be controlling Walter. He just found his new pawn. And Gus is very, very different from Tuco. Tuco is the erratic, uncontrollable, and unpredictable um, um, leader, right? That that they can't really um, they don't they, that that they don't know what move he's gonna do next, right? Because of his unpredictability, it can be good, it can be bad, right? And when he does something bad or he makes a mistake, then that is easy for our main characters to actually slip in and cause some harm. That is what inevitably killed Tuco. Gus is very different. Gus, Gus is not only conniving, he is also very assertive. He is very, um, in the episode, they, they even called him, um, um, observeth, ob observeth, ob observant, <laughs> English. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really hard to crack Gus. I would say. And even if Walter decides to take over Gus somehow, this is like somebody completely different, right? This isn't somebody who is like unpredictable that can slip up and make a mistake. Gus is the is the type of character that I feel like won't make a single mistake. At least until the story needs him to make a mistake, duh. but like he does extrude that power um that next level boss that I talked about all of those episodes ago, right? We need a new boss. We need a new, a new villain. We need the next up obstacle to be more dangerous and more um, difficult for the two characters to um, to overcome. And even in this episode, while unintentionally doing so, Gus did 
in a way present a really, really difficult obstacle for Walter in that he is letting him meet him, make the deal, at the same time when the baby is being born. Which, now I'm actually thinking, I don't, I don't think this is the case at all, I think it is just coincidence, but... Because there's no way that, that Gus would know that Skylar is, is expecting the baby. Like, like that would be like some next level like foresight or whatever. But not, and that, that's not going to be the case. But it is very coincidental that Gus um, wants to meet with Walter during the same day as um, Skylar's um, day, right? It's, it's... I don't think it's like... It is convenient, but it's, it's 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 not like plot convenience where I felt it was um, forced upon because it is presenting th thematically. It serves the story really, really well, and I really love the fact that we are get getting that moment with Walter when he when he chooses between the two. Um, we've been talking a lot about Walter and Gus. Um, before I jump gears to Jesse for a bit, let's just talk a bit about. Um, this overall episode, I think this episode is great. I think the episode direction was really good. Um, a lot of really, really good shots as well. Um, like they love using the um, the mirrors or the reflections when when we reveal characters and their in intention intentions. I suppose in in this episode, really good stuff. Even the opening, the, the cold open in the in the beginning, again like shot really well. Now that I'm looking back at it and um, realizing what the cold open is going to end with um it does gave off this like unfamiliar turf that they are in because when the kid was um riding on his bicycle and then i look at the um the neighborhood and, and all like this is a place that i am not familiar with at least in the breaking bad universe and, and you know in, in this area like we've seen a bunch of other places we've seen um the city that they are in but this specific neighborhood i I don't think I've ever seen this neighborhood before, or or at least the architecture, if that makes sense. Like 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 it doesn't feel like something that we've seen before. This is something. This is some place that is sort of alien to me. That is the vibe that I got. I didn't really comment on it because I wasn't sure if that's just my brain being a little weird or or whatever. But but uh, now looking back at it, it, it does make a lot of sense why I felt that way. Um, great cold open, great direction all throughout. Now, let's jump to Jesse. So, actually, you know what? Let's talk about this first. <laughs> um, hang on. Yeah, let's talk about this scene first. <laughs> um, what are they doing with Skylar's character? Not saying that it's bad. No, I I am enjoying Skylar's character, but in, I, I'm I'm talking more like what are they planning for Skylar's character? That's that's I think I think that's the question that um, I should have asked before. Rhetorical question. Don't don't actually answer it. But what are they setting up? We are setting up a lot of moments where Skylar and Walter's um relationship has been rocky, up and down. Um. Some trust, mistrust, suspicions, misjudgment, miscommunication. Um, I talked a bit about it in season one and more so in some of the episode discussions in season two about how there's a likely chance that both of them will probably get a divorce. This and this interaction between her and Ted, I'm still not sure how to feel. Because right now, I feel like Walter, when um, Skylar and Walter was having that conversation in the beginning of the episode where when Skylar was talking about like the birthday and all, and Walter's like, Wait, what? Why? 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 Why are you the one who's supposed to be, you know, getting the cake and, and whatever? Like, like, what is that all about, huh? Hmm. That little suspicion. Like, I'm feeling like that. I feel a bit suspicious. 
but I am still not sure. Because Ted is acting really kind to her, and she's also acting kind to him as well. But there's this sense of want and also uncomfortable uncomfortability as well to it. Like this moment when um, Skylar is mimicking Marilyn Monroe, singing happy birthday to um, the president, per se, and... I don't know, like... Half of, half of me feel like she is enjoying it, but then there's also when the song is over, you, you see her feeling a bit of discomfort, I suppose? I don't know. Not, not, I don't, I don't think it is discomfort. No, I think, I don't know. Is she enjoying it? Ah! I'm not good really with relationships, guys. <laughs> but I, I'm just gonna say my guy senses are tingling, and this, this is um. Uh, plus, her looking at the wedding ring and the, the, technically looking at the necklace, but. Hmm, not sure. I'm not sure. If if Walter and Jesse, it's not Walter and Jesse, if Walter and Skylar do end up getting a divorce and Walter missing the baby is a very, very strong argument um, for, you know, for, for them to, to get a divorce. I don't know. I feel, I feel like Ted would be just right there. Like, like, why would they set Ted up? I feel like Ted is a character that is written for this, for, for the story, for this purpose. Because why introduce a character that feels like, you know, why introduce a character that knows the wife of the main character and they used to know each other and they kind of have a relationship whatever that entails in the past before but now of course they are um just co-workers again but ted is also a, a person who doesn't have a wife right now because i think they're not married anymore if i remember remember correctly so like like why what what is ted's purpose i'm i'm, I'm asking for i'm i'm, I'm, I'm yeah <laughs> What is his purpose? That is my suspicion. Because he is written for a purpose. And right now that purpose, in my opinion, or at least so far, my conclusion is his purpose is to be for Skylar when Walter isn't there for Skylar. Huh. Which is why I asked, what did you wish for? Right, when, when he blew the candles. What is his wish? <sighs> And while we're still talking about these two, let's just jump right ahead into this scene as well. Because I think one of the things that this episode is doing, and it's pretty telling what they're doing, is showing a likely scenario where Skylar knows Walter's situation and what is her response, right? This is a similar situation where um, someone is doing a bad thing or a wrong thing and then Skylar um is telling them their stance right she's not going to in, in, in this situation and i feel like this is also a great i guess indicator of whether or not she's probably gonna get a divorce if she she finds out that walter is doing it the thing is i don't think that she's going to find out about it but she's still gonna get a divorce anyways and that's the thing that is gonna make it a lot worse but yeah skylar she Obviously, she is not um, into all of this, into, into all of this bad thing that Ted is doing in regards to, like, the revenue and the money and all, right? Very si similar situation with Walter in, in regards to, like, him trying to save a lot of money and all, but she is not supportive of this. She's not going to tell on him, but she is going to leave him. She is going to leave the office, right? 
problem is, Walter's situation just got, got, got a lot worse. Or, or better, depending on the perspective that you look at it, but... Walter is digging deeper and deeper and deeper. And as Walter digs as as Walter digs deeper underground, yes, he finds a lot more treasure, but it's going to be harder for him to get back up. To the point where, well, I can't really get back up, so might as well just dig further down, and that's the point where I don't want Walter to be at. I feel like at this point Walter could still, nah, he can't, not, not, not anymore. I was going to say that Walter still has a chance to, to, um, climb back up. But at this point, I feel like he just dig even deeper when he decided to go meet with Gus and not, um, be there with Skylar when the baby's coming. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, these two, what's really going on here? Hmm. All right, last thing I want to talk about, Jesse, specifically this scene. Um, did a bit of reading just a bit before I actually talk about this because I want to make sure that um, <laughs> what they're doing is what I think they're doing. Um, they're actually doing heroin. Forgive my lack of knowledge of the drug world because I never really um, get exposed to any of these, nor do I watch a lot of shows or movies that revolves around them. Usually they just blend in and, and feel the same, so I don't really know like what is what and what is what. I just I just see drug as drug. That's it. So forgive me of my lack of knowledge for for this. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be a good thing, right? If if, if you don't have if you have no idea what what all of these means. But anyways, um. First time for Jesse to be doing heroin. The scene is great. I think immediately it kind of gives a representation or a visualization of like what it feels like to do heroin for the first time. Um, you know, you you feel like you're floating in the air, like that. At, at least that is what the what the scene and what the shot is um, telling me. Um, but it does feel liberating. Or Jesse, right? This this feeling of like being, you know, floating in the air. Like there's nothing stopping you. You're not really being grounded, nor are you being confined. Like you are free. That sense of freedom for Jesse, it is a form of of escapism. Yes, but it is at this point in Jesse's li in Jesse's life, it, it it is very sad to see where he has gone for. Because again, at the start of the season, this house is pretty clean. And then you meet like the, the drug addicts that Jesse um, 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 got into in the Peekaboo episode. And then you see like how messed up that that entire place is. Like everything is unorganized. Everything is um, a mess. Representation of those people and their state of minds. But it also goes to show that these these people don't really care anymore. Because if they're if they keep doing it... Right, if they keep, you know, um, drugging themselves, then, then it is a form of escapism. They're, they're not going to bother with whatever happens in the real world. And for Jesse, it's just, again, like, especially when you consider, like, his family and, you know, what, he, what they want for Jesse to be a better person. We as an audience also know that Jesse do want to be a better person. That is why he told the kid to live a better life and, and don't be in this situation because he knows that he cannot escape but that goes to show that he has a desire to escape he just cannot escape it anymore and now again he is digging himself even deeper and especially during walter's hour of need right he, he feels what well, jesse feels um what's the word i'm looking for he feels like he isn't worth that much he feels like it's all over he feels like there's why would you continue all of this walt especially um when his friend died it's it's pretty obvious why jesse doesn't really want to continue anymore but he just cannot escape it and so he chose to do, to do it and 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 yeah. Should also worth mentioning that Jane 
follow through in this, but we gotta remember that Jesse gave her the option to go and leave his 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 um his home, but Jane decided to stay and um be with Jesse. So on one hand, you can say that that is an act of kindness. Because she is choosing to stay by his side, reaffirming their love, but it is also wrong when she is letting him do all of this. And her, of all people, the person who, at first, isn't allowing Jesse to do such things, but now she is letting him do such things, and she's doing it herself. I gotta, I gotta wonder who, who's the bad influence here. Yeah, it's yeah, sad situation. Anyways, <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm really, and gonna end the discussion you know, on, on, on a really soury note where um, we see all of our characters fall into depression and tragedy and um, choose all of the bad options in in life. Fantastic. It's not really fantastic. Um, anyways, see you all next time for the next episode of Reaction to Breaking Bad. Um, early access is available on Patreon. Links in the description below. That is it for now. Take care. Have a nice day. Peace.